name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I'm not sure if you know or not, but we are at the end of the Coptic year, the Orthodox year. We're at the end. The next two weeks is the end, and then you know September 11 is the beginning of the new year for us. And we're going to explain that as we get closer to the, to the new year, what that means. But now we're at the end of the year. Usually at the end of the year, we need to reflect how did our year go? Was it what we wanted? Is it the way we wanted to live? Is it, have I changed <clears throat> any during this period from last new year to this new year? Is there any, any difference in me? Have I changed the way I speak or the way I think or the, have I grown up? So usually at the end of the year, we're, we're re-examining ourselves, refocusing ourselves. And the church itself is kind of giving us strong messages. If you paid attention to the Gospel of Mark, it was basically saying, hey, be ready, be watchful. Um, the end could be near. And we take these messages lightly and we say, okay, the end is near. And we don't really take it seriously. But I think that if the church is really focusing on these readings and the, the church has a focus on re-examining ourselves during this end of the year, we should do the same. We should kind of reflect. Today in liturgy, kind of reflect. How did my year go from last Coptic year to the new year now? How did, how did it go? Have I grown up? Have I changed? Is there something different in me? The way I speak, the way I think? Is my friendships differently? I don't know. But try to take a moment now to re-examine as we have the translator translate, right? Let's, uh, let's think about that for a second. So, The best thing that can happen in today's liturgy is a refocusing of our life with God. A refocusing. Because sometimes, all of us, we get into a routine. Sometimes a good routine and sometimes a bad routine. But the routine we need to get into is a good routine with God. We have to examine how our year went. And when, today we say, no God, I'm ready to refocus my life with you. And we know, all of us know, how many distractions and problems and situations we had this past year. All of us know. And when the, the gospel says, watch, be ready, the end is near. Honestly, let's be really honest, we take it lightly. And all of us don't think our end is near. We don't think that I'm close to death or I'm close to Jesus coming back again. Either one of those will happen. And then I examine a lot of people who came and left and died this past year. Even there was one lady from our family meeting who passed away when I was on holiday and I was so troubled. I was so troubled. I was thinking, did I get a chance to tell her enough about God or did I plant good seeds in her? Did I, was she ready? Like the gospel says today and she didn't know her death was coming. She didn't know that it was time for her to go to eternity. So no one here can be sure about their life. Don't stay in the church today and say, I know my days are many more to come. I don't know. I pray you have many blessed days to come, but I don't know for you or for me. 
But all I know is today the church, the spirit of the church should be refocusing. God, I have been away from you too long. God, it's been a long time since I sat with you like I used to. And today we should say to God, say, God, I want to renew my life with you. I want to renew my covenant with you. I want to restore my relationship with you. That's the spirit of why we're here today in the church. And you're going to hear that this week, and you're going to hear that next week. So there's two weeks in a row where you're going to hear, hey, prepare yourself to draw near to God. So let's pray for those things as we get into the message today. So, here's the deal. There's two people in our relationship with God. There's God, and then there's who? There's two people in our relationship with God. There's God, and then there's us. Pretty simple, thank you. There's God, and then there's... Were you confused about that? <clears throat> there's God, and then there's us. Everybody's together. Now, God has a role, and we have a role. He has a job to do, and we have a job to do. I'm going to tell you what God wants to do first. And at the end, I'm going to tell you what we need to do to prepare ourselves for this new year. Everyone's together? So there's, tell me again, who is the relationship? There's, wait, all together there is? And the whole thing why we're here on earth is to focus on this relationship. You may think you're here for other reasons. No. You're here on this earth for one main reason. For you and me to unite with God. So there's this relationship that we need to always work on. And God is saying today, focus on it. Refocus on that. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is three things that God wants to do in us now to prepare us for later. Okay? There's three things that God wants to do now to prepare us for later. And at the end, you're going to decide. Say, okay, I want to do my part. The first thing God wants to do is coming from 1 Thessalonians. Everyone open your Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. <laughs> Listen to this. It says, <clears throat> And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in... In what? In what? Holiness. There was one person paying attention. Before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Number one thing God wants to do while, he is, while we're waiting. It says God will come again. 
It says God is coming again with all his saints. And while we're waiting, he wants to establish something in our hearts. He wants to establish holiness in our hearts. Now I said to you, there's a relationship between God and man. God and us. That's clear. God wants to what? Establish, plant holiness here, holiness here. That's what he wants to do while we're waiting. Now here's the thing. Here's the problem. You want to know the problem? Is we like things f fast. Isn't that true? Think about it. If I were to ask you, you have to work one year for $20,000, or if you can get it in one day, you would say, of course, Abuna, it's obvious. Why are you even asking the question? I like it in one day. But there's a consequence for wanting something so fast. What I feel that we're doing in our life with God is we want things fast. Quick prayer, give me a quick miracle. I want quick results from you, God. It doesn't work like that. Here's the problem. Every one of our sins, and I want you to think about this, every one of our sins gives us short-term satisfaction. Short-term good feeling. But God says, no. I want to plant something in you long-term. I want to establish holiness in your life. Holiness is not a bad word. Holiness changes the way you think, the way you see, the way you talk, the way you treat people. God wants to establish holiness while we're waiting for the end. Now the problem is, can I be honest with you just for a minute? I want you to pay attention to this. We don't want to put in the hard work to be with God. We don't want to struggle and spend time with God every day because it's hard. We don't want to do it. Like, by the way, even coming early to church, you know, Abuna early because it's, I don't, I want to, I don't sleep in any day of the week. Let me sleep in one day. Look. God wants to establish holiness. Do you want that or not? If you do, then you're going to have to put in effort and time and, and, and life with God. This is how it works. We're at the end of the year. And God is saying, I am coming soon. And believe it or not, if you don't believe it or not, it's up to you. He's coming soon. And what He wants us to have when He comes to see us, is He wants to see every one of us holy. That's what he wants to see. He wants to see there's a holy church here today in, in Zambia. That's what he wants to see. And we say we're too busy and too tired and we can't manage. We can't manage to wake up early in the morning to be with God. What? This could be the end. If this is really the end, then we need to be a little bit more serious and refocus with him. Holiness is not easy and it's not fast it takes many 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 months and many 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 years of walking with God so I challenge you and I pray today that you start or continue like we said last last week to walk with God in a serious manner because he wants to establish what who remembers he wants to establish holiness in our hearts when he comes flying down in a cloud with the saints. I want you to imagine that. He's flying down. He wants to come here and say, yes, this church in Lusaka, I want to come here first. This is the church of holiness. But when he comes, would he find that in us? Can he find holiness in us? Or can he find, I want just quick prayers, quick message, and go. Could he find during the week on Tuesday morning, or Wednesday morning, or Thursday morning, that we're working on a life of holiness. So God wants to establish holiness in us. Are you ready for that? Pray, God, please put holiness in my heart, in my mind, because I have a lot of things not pleasing to you. So pray for that prayer today. <laughs> Thank you.
Tukamia tuza kisa zaidi kuzika chini zina kisita. Mwana yangu kuti choo yamba kuzima tu zamene sima kwa kuendeza kwa kani kani na mwana na kikosi sabita. Kuli na zina zina yangu zamene sima kwa kuendeza kwa kani kani na mwana. So aku aku ti aku ti mulungu aku na mulungu azabu ya azabu ya kati ni kuzawona wana wanyo kapa kuzawona wana wanyo. So kwa kupenda kwa kwa mulungu aku na kutipe sa isi wana wanyo kiliwoye ya mulungu. Kwa di kuyela kwa tu kulikota ni kulikota ni kuyela kwa tu aku ti mulungu iye aku na kupaka kwa kuyela kati mwa mwoyo wanyo. So na kwa kati iye aku ya azabu ya isi woye ya aku ti kuhu Mau waktu kita mau kuyer, kita mau sajai. Kuyer, kita ni kunci sokongan kita untuk abuino. Kuyer, kita ni kunci sokongan kita mau abuino. Kuyer, kita ni kunci sokongan kita mau abuino. Gezi itu sama dengan mulungu abu kita. Nak isi kui mau jangan nasi kapuer, jangan isi sisi siwa. Nasi kapuer jangan isi woyer, jangan isi mukti masak. Di posa kaki dia mulungu abu kapuer, aku kau nak nak abuer aku apa? Nasi kapuer mau nak posa. Ndi posa kukwela kwa kwa mulungu, na kakwela kisa kiosu mulungu chari, na sayi kwa 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 I'm going to explain. Open up Luke 17, 21. Luke 17, 21. He wants to establish the kingdom in our hearts. Luke 7, 20, 17, 21 says, one of my favorite verses, by the way, I love it. It says, for indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Almost, good try. For the kingdom of God is within you. I love that. Do you believe that? How many of you believe that? The, the kingdom, raise your hand if you believe that. If you don't believe that, we're in the wrong place. For the kingdom of God is within you. Now, here's what I want to say. God wants to put permanently the kingdom in our hearts. Permanently. Here's a problem I have sometimes during the week, and, and Deacon David can, can, can confirm. We have in our one of our rooms, a whiteboard. You know the whiteboard, right? Where you can draw. Every single time, <clears throat> every single time we buy the markers, we write on the whiteboard, and then we try to erase it. What happens? It can't erase. It's permanent. <clears throat> so I turn to Deacon David and Semhar and all the Deacon Andrew and Mama Dahlia, and I say, hey, what kind of marker did we buy? They said, I think it's permanent. So the permanent marker, you can't remove it. Guess what? God wants to put the kingdom permanently now in your heart. Not later. Another thing that annoys me is when we're doing some cement work. You guys you know when we do cement work? Right? Right before it dries, what does somebody do? Huh? Who knows? Right before it dries, not only steps on it, but they do what? They write their name, because they have to be known forever. Forever and ever, <clears throat> Batwell's name is there. Not Batwell, I'm just joking, but Batwell's name is there, for example. Every single time, there's a permanent situation. And we laugh at those permanent situations. But guess what? God Himself wants to put the kingdom of heaven and all its glory permanently in us. Now, do you see the difference? We're not waiting to go to the kingdom. He wants to plant the kingdom now, permanently. You can't change, you can't remove it. Do you want that? Do you want the glory of God, the treasures and beauty of God, to be in you now? Yes. I do too. That's what God wants to say at the end of the year. He wants to put holiness and purity in our hearts. And number two, He wants to put the kingdom in our hearts. Remember Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11? 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says he wants to put eternity in our hearts eternity you know what eternity is eternity in our hearts wow what I'm saying is <clears throat> we've been living for the wrong thing we can't live for money we can't live for our job we can't even live for our families we have to live desiring holiness in the kingdom to be part of us because when that happens everything else will change don't live another day not knowing why you are here you are here to to allow God to establish his holiness in you you're here in this church for God to establish his kingdom in you now and then that's what's gonna change our life forever So number one, God wants to establish... You didn't have the screen this time? Sorry, you should remember it. He wants to establish... Holiness. holiness. Do you want that or not? Pray for that. Number two, He wants to establish... Kingdom. kingdom. Now. Not later. Now. And all its treasures. Now. Number three, He wants to establish the grace of, of God in us. The grace in us. You know, today in the readings in Acts chapter 11, the church of Jerusalem... They sent Barnabas to go to Antioch to see what's going on with the church. They heard the church is growing in Antioch. When Barnabas arrived, what did he find there in the church? He found the grace of God. He found the grace of God in the church. You know why God wants to establish number three, the grace? You know what grace is? Grace is you're coming to church today full of guilt, full of shame feeling weak and God says I forgive you I love you that's the grace he wants to establish you know why he wants to establish that because we're running away from him instead of running towards him we're afraid to draw near to him when he wants us to be next to him he wants us to be one with him he wants to establish holiness the kingdom and grace in us so that we can be ready for this new year so we can be ready if he comes again he wants to establish this permanently, permanent marker, engraved, engraved. The grace of God is so important, I'll tell you why, because we don't believe we should be forgiven for our sins. We feel shameful and guilt. That's why we don't receive Him. That's why we don't draw near to Him. We need to remove those thoughts. He wants to establish today, as we're ending the year, grace. I forgive you when your sin was so great his forgiveness was greater greater and that's what he wants to establish today those three things he wants to establish holiness in your life and my life he wants to establish the kingdom now within and he wants to establish the mindset of the grace that we don't deserve mercy or love or forgiveness but he wants to give it to us anyway so that's the three things that he wants to establish in us now it's our turn to respond <laughs> 
kufuna kufaka wakati wa moyo wake. Twende tumatapizira kuti na Mulungu afuna kufaka kuyea wakati wa mtima wake. Waamini suza sira, kuti yeye na akwera akapikire moyo wake kuti yeye moyo wake. Chachibidi Mulungu akuti afuna kufaka hukumu kwa moyo yaya, kupela hukumu wako kwa moyo yaya wakati wa mtima wake. Hukumu wake waamini aza hii aza kwa sababu kuzawa kuza soko lera kapena kuweruzira niposo cha chichati za meta kumzira kwa kumulungu hafuna kumaka chisomo kati mwamu ya mwati chisomo nchari kapena katika mwati chisomo nchari chisomo ni iti ya yote kumundu kukwela kutarichi ndiwe mtuochima mna matimo ambili ni mungu wa usapati mtima wako soko mbela mtima wako soko mbela kumakati wako ya mcheti uzachi peza chiko mbelelo uzachi peza chiko mbelelo uzachi peza chiko mbelelo uzachi peza chiko mbelelo ndiye chisomo cha mene mungu kwa atipasa cha mene isi stili isi kapani kilipo wa kwa umoyo sine za ene la kumi kwa ina umoyo kwa umoyo chisomo chate umoyo la kwa nao ndiye chisomo kwa mtu cha kwa you're probably asking yourself a question if you're smart and you're alert today here's the question you ask yourself how can I get permanently holiness, kingdom, and grace in my heart? How, Abuna? You can say all these words. The question you should be asking yourself now is, I want it, how do I get it? The answer is right in front of you. What's the answer? Who's got the answer? Who's got the answer? How? You're probably not thinking about the answer. I don't think you have the answer. How? Well, do you want, you said, I want the kingdom. I want holiness. I want the grace of God. I want to be different. I want to be transformed. And you're probably saying, how? So what's the answer? You're right in front of the answer. If you can't see it, you're going to miss it every Sunday when you come. Every Sunday you see it. You're standing right in front of it. What's on this altar, and I want to tell you, listen carefully, what's on this altar is God Himself. The holy body and precious blood of Jesus Christ. Communion as you know it is right in front of you. That's the answer. How do you get the kingdom inside? That's the answer. How do you get the grace of God? That's the answer. Remember during liturgy we say that this is for what? Remission of sins and eternal life. Do you remember that? Eternal life. Forgiveness of sins. The answer is right in front of you every Sunday, but we're missing it. You know why the word communion is important? If you break up the word communion, you take the first part of the word is come. And the second part of the word is union. Communion. God is saying, come and be united with me. And I will give you the grace of the holiness and the kingdom now you're standing in front of every Sunday and when you come to take it or or when you're afraid to take it or when you wake up late so you missed a chance to take it you missed a chance for the kingdom to be permanently put in your hearts holiness to be permanently put in your hearts and when you come to take it can you bring me a veil can you bring me one of those veils I want to show you what you do when you come and take it what you should do when you come and take it because the kingdom this is so important thank you when you're approaching the table all you should be focused on is eyes closed and God I need your holiness and your forgiveness and your love to be in me and you're repenting as you're walking towards the table and as you approach Jesus you are recommitting the covenant that I am yours and you are mine. You recommit every Sunday when you come to take communion. Don't get in line and, and rush quickly. Some people rush quickly, fast and get it. No. Take your time, even if you can close your eyes and say, God, I recommit to you again. I need you. I have darkness. I have evil. I need your holiness. I need your kingdom. I need your grace right now. And when you retake that and you reestablish that covenant with God, He will do the transformation from there. This is not a show. This is real. This is God Almighty right in front of you every Sunday. 
And everyone who is baptized in the Orthodox Church should be taking communion every Sunday. Do you hear me? Every Sunday. If you can't, that means you don't want the kingdom. You don't want holiness and you don't want the grace. The grace of God, you know why that needs to be established? Because you said, no, I can't come in there. I'm not worthy. That's the grace of God. Of course you're not worthy. I'm not worthy either. I'm the priest of the church. I'm not worthy. But he gives us grace to partake. Don't miss the chance for God to establish the kingdom, holiness, and grace in our hearts. That's when we'll have a transformation. All the things that we're struggling with and we're chained with and all the sins we keep thinking about will be free. But don't be away from the answer. It is the end of the year. And this past year, we haven't been so serious. Well, today is a day of refocusing, re-examining, and a day that we say, God, establish your kingdom in me. That's your prayer in liturgy today. Don't be distracted in liturgy. Say, God, I need your holiness in me. I need your kingdom in me. I need your love in me. I need your forgiveness in me. Come and clean me. Come and give me that grace forever. Make the permanent marker engraved in me. And that's the way we should live until he comes or until we go to him. That's the life of a Christian. Let's pray for that today. Pray for me to be like that. I'm praying for you to be like that. But remember what God wants to establish at the end of the year. Praying for you. Pray for me. Glory be to God forever. Amen.